this is eLife Reflections. Hello and welcome to another time of study. Today, we will reflect on the topic, Has God ever given you a promise? And our scripture is taken from Luke chapter 1, verses 34 to 37. I read from the CEV. Mary asked the angel, How can this happen? I am not married. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come down to you and God's power will come over you. So your child will be called the Holy Son of God. Your relative Elizabeth is also going to have a son even though she's old. No one thought she could ever have a baby but in three months she will have a son. Nothing is impossible for God. Amen. Today's passage is among the exciting verses of scripture. The announcement of the birth of the Son of God by an angel to the Virgin Mary. As incredible as the news sounded in her ears, Mary believed the words of the angel. In hope, humility, and total trust and obedience to God, she saw the manifestation of God's promise to her. In the same way, God might have said something to you about your life and destiny. Did you believe it? And what are you doing to ensure its fulfillment? I guess that's a food for thought for the day. I would have us to review the passage above by answering the following. What question did Mary ask the angel? Reference verse 34. What was the reply of the angel to Mary? Verse 35a. How did the angel describe the son to be born of Mary? We can find that in verse 35b. Who did the angel refer to as being pregnant, a matter considered impossible? Reference verse 36. And finally, how did the angel describe God to Mary? We can find that in verse 37. There are some truths in the scripture above that cannot be ignored. And so, let's do a quick recap. Mary asked the angel how she could be pregnant since she was not married. Mary was told that the Holy Spirit would come upon her and God's power will overshadow her. The angel said, The child to be born will be called the Holy Son of God. The angel also said, Mary's relative Elizabeth was also going to have a son in her old age. And finally, the angel said, Nothing is impossible for God. Wow! In response to the above and by application, what must be our attitude towards the promises of God? Derived from the acronym HOPE, here are ways to hold on firmly to God's promises. Letter H. In the acronym HOPE, we must hold firmly to God's promises without any doubt whatsoever. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 has this to say, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Letter O, in the acronym HOPE, we must operate from the place of humility and trust in the God who promised. Luke chapter 1 verse 38. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. Then the angel left her. Letter P. In the acronym HOPE, we must pray in faith based on the promises of God's word which never fails. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 and I love the scripture. It reads, God is not a man, so he does not lie. 
He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? And finally, letter E in the acronym HOPE. Expect the word to be fulfilled in God's way and within his timing. Galatians chapter 4 verses 4 and 5. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for those who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. Amen. Remember, Mary was a young virgin, but when God's favor was pronounced on her, the impossible became possible. The Bible says, For as many as are the promises of God, in Christ they are all answered. Yes, so through him we say our amen to the glory of God. For this reason I tell you, when you pray and ask for something, believe that you have received it and you will be given whatever you asked for. Child of God, whatever God has said about your life, continue to hope in him and he will show you his glory in his time. Mary believed in the words of the angel and declared, I am the Lord's servant. May it happen to me as you have said. Amen. In conclusion, what have we said? If we have to hope in God's word, then we must hold firmly to God's promises without any doubts whatsoever. We must operate in the place of humility and trust in God. Pray in faith based on the promises of God. And finally, expect the word of God to be fulfilled in God's way and time. Amen. I don't know how this brief message has ministered to you, but please prayerfully ponder over it again. And when necessary, let us repent of our sins of doubt and unbelief and hope in God. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Dear God, we hope and trust in your unfailing word. Thank you that we will see the manifestation of that which you have spoken concerning us because nothing is impossible for you to do. Amen. Wow. This is all that time would allow us to share today. So, until I come your way again, this is Suska wishing you Jesus. God richly bless you.